Hi guys, welcome back to Big City Studio Online. We're so excited that we get to be with you again. So enjoy today as we are in progress with our current series game plan. Today is lesson two, and I'm gonna go ahead and let Katie introduce it. Welcome back to our series, Game Plan, where we are learning all about how God's plan for our lives is the best. Now, I know some kids that are afraid of the dark. Have you ever been afraid of the dark, especially when you're lying in bed at night? That can be scary sometimes. But I also know some kids that plug in a nightlight so that their room isn't so dark. Today, we're gonna learn how Jesus is the light in the darkness. Our world is dark and full of sin, but Jesus is the light of the world. To help set that up, let's check out our video with Todd and see how Jesus is the light in the darkness. All right, that makes sense? Yeah, yeah. Tony, I'm, I'm really glad you decided to train me. Hey, forget about it. It's what you hired me to do. Besides, it's like my old buddy, Jabron Lames, always used to tell me. Jabron Lames? Yeah. Don't you mean LeBron James? No! Jabron Lames! Hello? Small forward for the Saskatchewan Sasquatches. He scored 98 points in one game, doing nothing but granny shots with his eyes closed. What? That's impossible. Oh, you think so? Yeah, I know so. Okay, well, I think it's time to start today's training. Am I supposed to shoot the ball in the box? Uh, no, it's gonna go like this. What are you doing? I put a box on your head, what do you think I'm doing? Well, you can't leave it on my head. Why not? Well, I can't see. Duh, ah. that's the point. I wanna test your instinctive reflexes. Take the box off my head. Wow, you're getting a little upset, don't you think? Well, it's because I'm afraid of the dark, okay? Afraid of the dark? Are you serious? You're like umpteen years old. I know, but I can't help it. I've always been afraid of the dark. Well, you seem to have forgotten one of God's promises then. What promise? It's the same one the kids are learning about in today's lesson. It's from John 8, 12. You don't gotta walk in darkness because God lights your path every day. Really? It says that? Yup. Now listen, while we're getting ready to learn how to follow God's game plan, walking in the light, let's put this box to good use. Come on, I got some trash in my car. Our world can be dark and scary because it's full of sin. Facing it alone can also be hard and leave us wandering around without direction. But Jesus is always with us. If we follow him, he will light our path. And we're going to learn about that in our lesson today. Right now, we're gonna check in with Callie from the Valley and learn our What You Gotta Know. You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. You know I gotta tell you what you gotta know. Tell you what you gotta know. Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. Today, we're like basically talking about how like Jesus is like the light of the world. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. Jesus will light my path every day. Oh my Lanta, is Jesus a light bulb? <laughs> That's not right, Jesus isn't a light bulb but he does shine bright in a totally dark world. It's dark because it's like full of sin and evil and stuff. So like we need Jesus to show us how to live in this dark world. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. Jesus will light my path every day. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. Wow, she is so silly. But I love our what you gotta know today. Are you ready? Let's do it together. It's gonna go like this. Jesus will light my path every day. You wanna try it again? Jesus will light my path every day. All right, good job. Boys, let's do you first. Girls, sit down. Hey boys, what you gotta know? 
Jesus will light my path every day. Good job. Girls, stand up. It's your turn. Hey, girls, what you got to know? Jesus will light my path every day. Great job, kids. All right, guys, you know what's coming. Hey, guys, what you got to know? Jesus will light my path every day. Good job. That is awesome. Um, hey Megan, uh, what is this thing? Um, please feel free to share your plan to get rid of the darkness with us because your plans are always so entertaining. That thing that you're talking about is the solution to all of your problems. It's a first class Olympic torch replica I made all by myself. <laughs> um, it kind of looks like a broom with a towel wrapped around it. <laughs> <coughs> this fine piece of equipment has many uses. For instance, I could do bicep curls all day. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. Or I could light this end that I soaked with gasoline and all of your darkness will go away. Gasoline? That is so dangerous. We shouldn't be doing that. Now, I think... You're a little mixed up about what we are learning today. Um, so feel free to hang around and hear the real deal. Okay? It's also good for stretches too. <laughs> I will hang around, but first give me the skinny. Okay, no problem. The skinny is that when we aren't sure what to do, we should remember that we aren't alone and that God will lead us where he wants us to go. Hmm. That makes so much more sense than what I thought you were talking about when yeah. you were getting rid of the darkness. Yeah. Although my plan, plan was pretty foolproof. <laughs> Can I still share it? Sure, I am a little bit interested to hear exactly what you had planned. Awesome. So, have you ever seen the lighting of the torch ceremony at the Olympics? Of course I have, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all you need to do is get a torch team together and keep it constantly burning. Now, I was thinking probably around 24 people, since there's 24 hours in a day, one person for each hour could hold it and keep it burning all the time. Um, and would I have to pay this torch team or do you think that I can get 24 people to give me an hour of their time every day for free? Hmm. Well, actually, I already thought about that and, you know, you could probably get by with paying them like gum or jelly beans. People love free candy or, you know, pretty close to free. Um, it's super unhealthy, but, you know, it's affordable at least. Mm hmm. Um, okay. And would I use a torch inside or just outside? Because I kind of feel like it would be a fire hazard. Ha! You have nothing to worry about. I already tested that too. And it's definitely a fire hazard. Woo! My aunt's house went up in smoke like a dry hay bale. <laughs> um, your poor aunt. No one was hurt, were they? No, I okay. made sure my aunt and all her carrots were in the backyard before <sighs> I did my test run. Well, that is good. Uh, where's she going to live now? <laughs> well, since it's your fault, I told her she could stay with you for the five months while her house is being rebuilt. <laughs> Hope you like ferrets. Hey, that had nothing to do with me. It wasn't my idea at all. It was all your idea. I knew nothing about it. Uh-oh. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I better stop my aunt before she turns your bedroom into a ferret palace. Oh my gosh. Wait, Andy! Don't let like her! Hurry! The stinky one! Stop her!
Boys and girls, it's time for our Bible story today. And today's story is found in Exodus chapter 13. <clears throat> you may have heard the story of Moses and the Israelites escaping Egypt, right? Well, as you know the story, um, it goes like this. They, you know, they crossed the Red Sea on the dry land. Well, it took a little bit for them to get there, though. So it was pretty epic. It was a really cool sto story. However, there's a cool part of the story that happens between them escaping Egypt and crossing the Red Sea. You see, when the Israelites were freed from slavery in Egypt, they set off on a journey. They were leaving and heading toward the promised land, right? Well, that was really awesome, and it was a place where God had promised them, and it was going to be very special for them, but it took a little time for them to get there. And as the story goes, there was an easy way to get there that would have taken them through um, a place where they would have had to have a battle with the Philistines, or there was a longer route that would take them to the promised land, but it would require lots of twists and turns and, and a lot of different areas that they had to go that would require them following some directions. The problem is that they didn't know the directions. They had to trust God for that. God didn't want them to have to um, wander and to be lost, so he created a way for them throughout this winding route to lead them through the wilderness or the desert. Moses was the leader of the Israelites, so he needed to know where to go. However, they didn't have a GPS. They didn't have, hey, Siri, where do I go? They didn't have a map. All they had was God to rely on. So anyway, it was awesome. God had a plan. His plan was to provide them a cloud or a pillar of smoke by day. So as they were wandering through the wilderness, their, God's plan was for them to just follow the cloud, follow the pillar of smoke. That was pretty good. So that's what they did. As they were wandering through the desert, they would follow the cloud, and wherever the cloud went, they went until it got dark. And see, the Israelites had a big problem. They were trying to get as far away from the, from the Egyptians as they could, so they were moving all day, and they were traveling all night as well. Well, they couldn't follow a pillar of smoke during the day. So God had another plan. He created a pillar of fire to follow by night. So they followed the, the cloud of, of light or the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. And on their own, the Israelites would have never known where to go for or what to do, but um, he wanted to lead them. And he provided a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night to take care of them. In your lesson today, you're going to learn that God does the same thing for you when you don't know where to go. Why, hello everyone! My name is Rolanda Teast, but nobody goes by Rolanda anymore, so you can just call me R. R. Teast. Now, I've just been working on my newest painting, but I really need a break. So I thought you could help me with today's power verse. See, the problem is though, I sleepwalk at night. And last night I was painting the power verse and I started using pictures instead of words. And now I don't know what it's supposed to say, so I need your help. Let's take a look at it together. 
eyeball. No, that can't be it. C. No, boys and girls, what is that? Oh, I. And the flashlight. No, um, the glow. No, that's not it either. Ah, yes, light of the world. If sheep. No, um, maybe lamb. Huh. Oh, I've got it. I bet it's you. You know, another word for sheep. Follow me. You won't have number. Hmm. Uh, maybe digit. No, you know, I bet it's just the word two. Walk in eye mask -ness. Hmm, that one looks difficult. Boys and girls, what could that be? Ah, yes, darkness. Because, oh, we know this one. You will have the light that leads to life. John 8, 12. That's it. Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 8, 12. Great job, everyone. You can all have a seat. Now, would you like to see what I've been painting today? This one is extra fun because it has to do with our lesson. See, when we're talking about how Jesus gives us his light, I think this is what we will look like. Ta-da! She's glowing. See, when we have the light of life, I think we just glow. Maybe not, but it's still a fun painting, don't you think? Anyway, thank you so much for all of your help today. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Do you know what it's like to be without electricity? I know that I do, and I know that people who live in Cedar Rapids and in the area after our bad storm were without electricity for such a long time. We didn't have air conditioning, we weren't able to use our computers or phones or refrigerators or stoves or microphones. <sighs> Well, me anyway. And we wouldn't have lights. That was the hardest thing, wasn't it? Not being able to turn on a light. I remember that I would go in a room and it'd be dark and I'd try to turn on the light switch and it didn't work. When that happened, could you see anything at night with all the lights off? No, it was too dark. Life is pretty hard in the dark, isn't it? Now, can you imagine being in the dark all day, every day? You know what? That would be so hard. I was so happy when the electricity came back on. You know what I did in the dark? I stubbed my toe a whole lot because I ran into things because I couldn't see. You know what else we would do if we were in the dark all the time? We would call people the wrong name because we couldn't see them to see who they were. We would maybe eat weird stuff because we couldn't see what we were eating. Can you imagine eating pudding and thinking it was pudding, but actually it was sour cream? <gasps> Look at, think of all those things that would happen if we were always in the dark. Now, today we're not talking about that kind of dark, about when the electricity is out. We're talking about the dark in our hearts and in our minds. When we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go, who to trust, or what our future holds. I'm talking about those times when we feel lost, like we're stumbling around in the dark. Now that's just part of life in this world though, and we need to learn how to navigate the dark times because this is a sinful 
evil world, boys and girls. So we need to find the source of light in the darkness that comes with an evil world. See, at times, I'm not sure what to do. At times, it feels dark in our lives. We feel like we can't see ahead. We don't know what's going to happen next. Things aren't clear, and we simply don't know what to do. The normal, that's normal in this world that we live in because the world itself is full of darkness or full of sin and evil. The enemy, Satan, loves darkness. He loves making you feel like you don't know what to do or who you are or who to trust. He loves making you feel like you're all alone. But as Christians, as Christ followers, we know from God's word that we are not alone. I must remember I am not alone. We know from our power verse that we just saw that we can stick with Jesus and he will lead us in the light and take care of us. What is that power verse again? I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 8, 12. Jesus is the opposite of darkness. Jesus is never unsure of what to do or where to go. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In other words, boys and girls, if you stick with me, Jesus said, you don't have to live in darkness. You don't have to feel lost and alone. He says that he will show us the way by shining his light all around us. He'll clear things up with him him you will see. He knows the way and God will lead me where he wants to take me. So I have a challenge for you guys to do at home. I want you to have your parents or maybe a sibling make an obstacle course for you and then I want you to try to turn out all the lights and make it as dark as you can and try to walk through the obstacle course without being able to see. I bet you bump into things. I bet you stub your toe. And I bet you just don't know where you are. It's really kind of impossible. However, when you can't see where you're going, do you know what you need to do? I bet if you try it another time, and have your parents bring a flashlight and lead you through it, you'll be able to find exactly where to go and not stub your toe or run into things. With Jesus' help, it's the same way. Jesus lights our path so that we can't, don't run into things and we know where we are because that is what he does. It's much easier with the help of a light. Well, in a dark and sinful world, boys and girls, we can't make it on our own. But with God's help and his light, we can make it. God will lead you where he wants to take you. Sometimes in the dark world, Satan tries to trick us into doing our own thing and to choosing where we want to go and what we want to do with our lives. Do you know what that's called? That's called walking in darkness. But God has a better plan. God knows the best way to go and the best way to live our lives. Remember the verse, if you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. You might say, well, that's great, but how do I know? How do I see the light? How do I find out where to go? And how do I know? Because you'll know what to do. And if you follow Jesus' plan, how do I follow Jesus' plan? The Bible says in Psalm 119, 
105, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. That means if you study and read God's word, the Bible, it's like a light and it will help show you the way you should go in a dark and sin-filled, sin-filled world. You'll know what to do and you'll have Jesus on your side, always. Let's go ahead and pray. Lord Jesus, if there are any that are watching today that are feeling like they're walking in darkness or they feel all alone, Lord God, let the light of the world and the word of God shine brightly in their lives to show them what to do. Lord God, that they would be reminded that they are not alone, that you are with them always and you love them and that they have Jesus, the light of the world, the light that leads to life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, guys. I love you. And just a reminder that we are live and next Sunday we are going to be live in the church, not in the tent. And we will be in room 110 for Big City Studio, both the 9 and 11 o'clock service. But we will also be right here online. So I hope you can join us one way or the other. Love you. Bye-bye.